Can you hear me? Yes? Oh my god, did you just have no sound for the entire starting soon? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, chat. Yeah, now you can hear me. Okay, okay. Oh no. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm a little zoomed in today. Well, I don't... Yeah, I've been a little zoomed in. I have a new setup. Well, kind of new setup. I have a new desk. And it's like a desk. Okay, this is really fun. Let me show you. Let me show you, chat. I can... This is a standing desk. So you guys are gonna... You guys are, are going up right now. You guys are going up right now. But because of that, I haven't figured out the settings yet. I haven't figured out the settings yet. But we're going to have standing streams now, which means there's going to be more energy in the streams. Not today, though, because today we are having a mental health months. stream. Oh my god, Thank nearly you. two years. Oh my god, nearly Hope two you are years. Well. That's Exploded wow. for today's Let me put on some music again. Three. Now that you can finally hear the music, let me put on some music. Uh, how are you guys doing, though? How is everyone? Are you guys well? um this is our third mental health stream mental health mondays with rise above the disorder today um which is very exciting very fun um we're with courtney today um who's gonna introduce themselves in a second is zuko better zuko is better he still doesn't have a voice um i i've been keeping an eye on him and he, i think there he is <laughs> He stopped gagging, which is nice. He stopped like trying to throw up and he's been eating normally, which is very good. Um, but he still doesn't have a voice. Um, so whenever he tries to meow, it, there's either nothing coming out or he screeches. Um, you sick? Oh no, I hope you feel better soon. I hope you feel better soon. I, I'm okay. I just woke up from a nap. Mental health is important, Nihachu love. Very true. Thank you, Eden, for the sub as well. I appreciate it. Uh, I just woke up from a nap. Um, I'm traveling to LA tomorrow, uh, which means I'm going to be away for a week, uh, just so you guys are aware. Um, but I'll keep you updated on my Instagram and I'll try to make a vlog out of it. I know there hasn't really been any YouTube but it uploads recently. Uh, I'm trying to slowly get back onto that. But yeah, I, uh, I'm going to go to LA tomorrow. Which is very exciting. I can't. I still cannot tell you why. I still cannot tell you why. But once, once every, once all the. Have okay. Great I can tell you. I'm we shooting content. I'm going to LA to do content. What kind of content? You're gonna see. I'll show you when I'm back and when it's uploaded and when I'm allowed to talk about it. But I'm very excited. It's very cool. Um. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm. I'm pretty good. Um. I was in London over the weekend. Um. That was very fun. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much what's been going on. Um, hello, Stalic. I hope you're well. How are you doing? Just reading chat. Am I meeting someone in LA? Yeah, I'm meeting a few people. Um, I'm meeting Jonas. Oh, Jonas, my beloved. I miss Jonas so much. I'm meeting Jonas. Uh, and then I'm also meeting a friend who is not a content creator. So you might not know him. You might have seen him in my LA vlog. His name's Alex. <clears throat> I love Alex. Alex is like the sweetest and best and kindest person ever. Um, so I'm meeting him there. But he's not a content creator. I'm not meeting him for content. I'm also not meeting Jonas for content. I'm just seeing my friends. Uh, but I only have a few days. And I don't have much time. Because I'm going to be really busy. So I'm not going to see too many people minx alex no minx doesn't know well she knows alex but it's not minx alex um have i eaten today yes i have i had some pasta as always <laughs> um yeah uh for the people who don't know what the mental health mondays are about we are interviewing mental health professionals working at specifically working at rise above the disorder brad um which is a charity which thank you for the five dollars per hour we're collecting money for um because they connect and pay for people's therapy so if you need therapy or if after the stream you feel like you would like to try out rad um 
you can just go to their website and yeah uh get, check out their services but yeah i'm going to let courtney as well explain everything to you guys uh so i'm gonna join the discord now and see if she's ready <clears throat> Yeah, if you have at any point have any questions, you guys are very welcome to ask them. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else you guys need to know. Um, but these are always quite like chill and we're just talking about mental health, which is something I'm, uh, that's really important to me. Uh, as you might know, I talk about it a lot. It's and I'm very happy that I get to do these streams. I'm just reading chat right now. I'm just reading chat. Um, but yeah, chat. As always, this is not a substitute for therapy. If you guys think you need therapy, then, you know, again, you can check out RAD or find a therapist that suits you and, and your needs. This is not actually therapy. We're not here um, to, you know. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Courtney. Hi. Hello, how Hi, are you? How are you? I'm good. good. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. <laughs> Let me quickly get you up on stream. Um, there we go. Hello. You're on stream Hi. now. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for being late. This is completely my fault, but okay. I hope it's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> okay, I'm glad. Would you like to introduce yourself for my stream? Yes, yeah, of course. Thank you for having me um, on your stream. My name is Courtney. I am a senior care uh, care team lead over at Rise Above the Disorder. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, which is where I am right now. Um, and I guess just some background on me. Um, yeah, I went to school. I uh, went to the U of O, so University of Oregon. I got my uh, I got my bachelor's of psychology there, and then I went to England, um, to London, and I got my master's uh, in social work. Oh, wow. So you lived in, in the UK for a bit? Yeah, for about two years. Oh, wow. Where did you live? I, live in, I lived in Greenwich. Okay. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Best times in my life. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. I um I live in the UK right now and I'm actually going to LA tomorrow, which is really funny. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so well, much. Let you me know some places to go. I can help you out. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I visit there a lot. I'm actually planning on moving there um in a few months though. So, you know, I oh, might nice. let you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um all right yeah so you said you are a senior social worker right which yes. what what do you do what's like what does that mean yeah so i am kind of over i oversee um a lot of other uh care care managers here at rad so i'm kind of like one of the higher levels um, and so I take care of clients as well as check in and make sure things are going well with the other care team members. I also do workshops and stuff. So um, sometimes we'll have like meetings and I can kind of go over different things like cultural, culturally sensitive care and all that kind of stuff to make sure that we all work as a team and that we're all using the same kind of like um, directives and the same sort of, uh, I guess, like instructions and knowledge sort of a thing <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i see um i have written down a few sorry. questions so if i just jump between questions i'm so sorry <laughs> um <Okay. laughs> but also if you have anything you ever want to like throw in and say uh just 
you know, feel free to feel welcome to. Um, but yeah. my next question I have written down here is, well, it kind of is the same thing that I have already asked you. It is, what does your like day to day li like life working at Rad or you know in your job uh, look like? Um. Okay. Let's see. It's every day is different. So I'm kind of ADHD in which I hate having like a routine and like a schedule mm -hmm. every single day. And so I would kind of like start by checking like emails and things like that, making sure that there isn't any kind of like um, emergencies with my clients because we all kind of have fluctuate between like 35 people that we're kind of responsible for. Oh, wow. So I, yeah, so I definitely have to like look and check my emails, check our, um, we have a confidential like website that our clients use to communicate with us. So making sure and like reading all those messages that I missed, especially for like days like Mondays, right, where we have things that come in over the weekend and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's also like therapists that reach out to over the weekend sometimes. So connecting with them, also just making sure that everything is like not on fire, <laughs> basically is like the first bit of the job and then usually I'll have like some meetings during the day um I run some care team meetings so I meet with like my group and we kind of go over different cases they might have questions on and kind of like unpick a little bit of that because sometimes things especially international clients can get kind of confusing so we kind of work together to, to like kind of solve those issues and yeah I might have some client calls I might have check-ins so client calls are with new clients and so we kind of go in and talk and have a conversation about like what brought them to RAD and what they're kind of looking for in a therapist. Um, we also have grant check-ins, which is like my favorite part because we have people who are on our grant for like months at a time. And like when you meet them, they're just kind of um, despondent and they're just like, yeah, like not going well, like things are, you know, kind of rough. And then like after some sessions of therapy, we do a check-in. We're like, how are you now? And they're just so happy and like, Aww. just full. it's the best thing ever. Um, you can talk to anyone on my team. They'll say like grand check-ins are like the best. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. So does that mean you're like the, one of the like first responding people when someone comes onto the page and wants to, you know, get help or get in contact with someone? Yeah, I do some of the triaging. So when an application comes in, it's myself and two others that will go through and kind of look at um, what they're needing and kind of like judge them on a scale of like, this person absolutely needs help versus this person can be on our wait list for a little bit um, and still be fine. And so we kind of go ahead and triage them and we make sure that everything is okay on the application. Uh, we can get in touch with that person if everything's not looking okay on the application. Um, and just making sure that everything is good for all the other case managers to kind of go in and take a case. Okay, I see, I see. Um, so do you work from home? That's one question. Like when you were talking about going through emails, do you work from home? Yes, I work that? from home. <laughs> um, I love working from home. It's the best thing in the world, but I have had difficulties. Um, I have a cat and also a puppy. Oh. And so, yeah, and so, like, they'll kind of, like, play or chase around each other and just, like, get all in my way sometimes. So when I'm on a client call, I'm just, like, please be quiet, please be quiet. Yeah. Especially, like, especially, like, with my dog, she has, uh, she loves her squeaker toys. And so I'll be, like, on a call talking about, like, suicidality and things like that, like, really serious things. And she's just squeaking in the back. And I'm, like, please oh, stop. No. Yeah, but most of the people that I talk to are always just like, we love to hear a dog or it's okay. So I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, they're they're both very welcome in this stream as well. I have three cats myself. Well, two cats and then one of them is my roommate. So, you know, they're all very welcome here. Very welcome. Yeah. We, we, love, we love pets here. <laughs> yeah, I, I love pets. That's so cute. Um, okay, I can't, um, another question I have written down is kind of how did you get into mental health how did you like get interested in what are your experiences obviously only you can only share whatever you're you're comf comfortable sharing but yeah that's my next yeah. question yeah so my path through mental health is kind of a non-traditional kind of crazy one so um it kind of started in third grade which is 
so random, but um, in third grade, I changed elementary schools and I did not have any friends at all. So, it, and I also was bullied. So it kind of sunk me into like a depression and I started really experiencing, obviously I didn't know then, but experiencing depression and also social anxiety because I would have to just spend recesses and like lunches by myself. So I'd hide in like the bathroom and things like that. And so that kind of like made me shrink into myself. And so I stopped going to school. So I would go every once in a while. And that kind of trend that happened all the way to high school, where I would just not kind of show up because of my social anxiety. And um, obviously, my grades were awful. (laughs) So I ended up dropping out of high school because I just had horrible grades and I just wasn't going to graduate, um, which was awful. So I ended up going to, um, it's kind of a trade school. It's called Job Corps. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of both get your high school diploma, you can get a GED, and then you can also work on a trade. So you can become like, you know, culinary arts and get into that. Or you can also get like office administration certificates and things like that. So I ended up going there, um, completely like altering, (laughs) life altering moments. Um, I did really well in school there. I met some really awesome people and kind of regained my confidence back. A little bit um, in terms of like being social and introducing myself to new people and things like that. And I got my high school diploma. So I was really excited. Um, most people in my family kind of just stopped there. Like my mom, she didn't even finish high school. So it's a big deal in our family and like my community. Um, cause I'm from South Central Los Angeles. So it's a big deal to like even get your high school diploma. So I could have stopped there, but. My friends and I were like, no, like, let's go to community college. Like, let's, you know, see if that's a good fit for us. Um, So we went to a community college. I had to take about two buses to even get there every single day. Um, I know. And there I had my first psych class. um, And it was like love at first test, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I, I just fell in love with psychology Um, my teacher was amazing and I just like I was like I want more of this Mm -hmm. (laughs) so then I started majoring um, in psychology um, and it just gave me I guess the boost I needed to to be like no I want to I want to pursue this like I want to actually go to a four-year college and like make this my career goal Mm -hmm. Um, so I ended up transferring to University of Oregon which was a huge deal because I had never been out of the state before, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and a lot of my family had never been out of the state before, so it was a huge deal Um, in my immediate family as well. We've never had someone um, go to college, so I was the first to kind of, like, go, and it was just a huge, crazy thing. Um, Had the best time at University of Oregon. It was amazing, and then um, my friend, my roommate there, um, who also works at RAD, she um, was like, we should do grad school in, like, England. And I was like, what? <laughs> that's a huge and, step. <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge step. And so I, me, who had never been out of the state, I was like, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so her program was only one year, and mine was two years. So I had a whole year there to myself where I had to, like, I was forced to get out there, forced to make friends and kind of really, like, let myself out of my shell. Um, And I think my whole life was just leading up to this and, like, helping people and kind of, like, helping, like, a a, a version of me back in third grade where I was just scared and sad and just couldn't tell anyone what I was going. Um, So then I ended up coming to... Uh, rad, which is really awesome, and I've just been loving my time here. But that's kind of my journey. It was very untraditional, and but everything, like honestly, worked out enough um, to put me here. I I love that. I mean, obviously, I'm so sorry for you know your experiences and everything. That I I can relate to that as well. I've moved so many times in my life, and I switch schools all the time, and being the new the new kid is always really difficult especially I've I've found that the younger the children are the meaner they can be 
Um, mm -hmm. so I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that you had to go through that, but it set you Children up. Children have a... no filter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They have no filter. They're so yeah. evil and rude. They can be horrible. <laughs> I oh my god, yeah. Which which you wouldn't think, but but yeah, I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm yeah. I'm so glad you know you you made it through here, and it's it's such a like huge inspiration i feel like for a lot of people i can like um for, for like how anxious you were and how hard it was to try out new things and you had to drop out of school which is you know it's it, it can be really difficult and then going to a different country to study there for even another year without your friends that's that's incredible um yeah amazing thank you so much mm -hmm. i really appreciate sure. it it was hard at points but i just kept saying like i cannot fail yeah <laughs> like i cannot fail i have a younger niece and nephew um and so my nephew is 15 and my niece is nine and so a lot of my experiences were their first experiences mm -hmm. like their first time leaving the state was to drop me off at college their first time on a plane was to come see me and visit me at college my mom's first time out of the country was to drop me off at college and so I do everything for like my family and I want them to know that you know there's so much more for you um which is why like I'm a huge advocate for like the black community and obviously people of color who come from like marginalized or low-income areas <laughs> because it's like we're not taught to kind of shoot for the stars it's almost just like as long as you get your high school diploma, you can get a job and that's it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really want to show them and show everyone else that like, it is possible. You can fully drop out of school and still end up in London somehow. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. That's so great. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad because I, you were talking about how in your community, a lot of people don't even have their high school diploma or graduation. Yeah. Um, and yeah. That's really inspiring, and I'm glad that yeah. you get to inspire your your younger nieces and nephews as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah my mom uh, didn't finish college, so when we kind of when I decided that I wanted to go to a university, I had to figure it all out myself because she had never been down that. So even filling out like forms to like apply, like registration and all that stuff was just so difficult, <laughs> and I'm just like. I'm so happy that I went through it so that when my nephew eventually goes to college, I can be like, I can help you fill out that form. I know the scholarships. I know the grants. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I Yeah. You don't think yeah. about that, I feel like. But I had the same. I had a similar thing because I moved out at 17 without my parents wow. into a different country. And then ha like my mom didn't know many things either of of like, you know, even getting like support from the state or anything. and figuring it all out can be so scary so i'm yeah. i'm extremely like yeah i f I feel for you in that moment because i know how hard it can be when no one can help you um, but that's thank incredible. you and it's so interesting of your story too and that's just so crazy yeah so many stories and that's why i love yeah. the industry because it's so fun to hear about everyone and how everyone got into you know got in at least interest into in in these yeah. in these areas yeah um, well, that kind of already answers my question of what you went, went to school for. Um, but the other question I have is what your career path looked so far. Is this your first job or have you worked in other jobs before? Um, yeah, so in college, I did uh, like my undergrad. I worked. I did. Um, I was a student aide for a daycare center, oh, which was cute. amazing. It was really fun. I got to have really good bonds and connections with the kids and stuff. Um, and that was kind of my first experience as well as dealing with children with developmental disabilities. Um, so we had kids that have, you know, different sides of the spectrum of autism. Um, we had kids with Down syndrome as well. And so that really um, touched me. And I got really close to a young girl there who had nonverbal autism, but during my time there, she was able to say different things, and she even, like, was able to say my name, and it was just so rewarding, so I, I absolutely loved that, um, and then my next job out of um, college would have been, I did some internships in my undergrad, but, like, my 
first job ever out of college. Um, I worked as a caregiver in a nursing home. Well, it's kind of like a nursing slash retirement home. Mm -hmm. Um, And that went pretty okay. (laughs) Um, I had some really good experiences, but also some not so great experiences. One of the residents, um, she had Alzheimer's. uh, Mm -hmm. She had dementia. And I worked seven to seven. So seven at night to seven in the morning. And obviously, like, you know, it takes a toll on you. And it was just, I was having a really hard night and the resident was having just a harder night, kind of remembering things and stuff. And so she ended up thinking that I was an enemy and she said some really nasty things and I just had to just break down. I just started crying and I was just like, I can't do this anymore (laughs) because it was just so sad to deal with. And the lady was just so mean and I had to stay there. It was like maybe four in the morning at that time and I was tired. Um, so at that point I was just like I can't (laughs) and so uh rad was kind of like my second official adult job Mm -hmm. so I'm so lucky that um I was able to get hired on here because that experience made me never want to go back to working as a caregiver yeah oh my god that's still so nice like from the jobs that you've had previously I can tell like how just caring you are and that's so sweet yeah I love that um, yeah I'm kind of definitely kind of like a mom of the group where I'm always <laughs> like is everyone okay does everyone have snacks make sure you use the bathroom like oh. that's just <laughs> that's kind of just me as a person I'm always just trying to look out for others so it just made sense and like in that first psych class I took I was just like mm-hmm. this click like this is this is me <laughs> it's so easy like it it makes so much sense yeah 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 oh that is so nice um, thank you okay um there are a few a few things i want to touch on obviously um you said you were working with children especially mm-hmm. children who had like a uh, certain especially mental issues um and then also again like you being in the black community and um, people in your community, like, like you kind of setting an example for 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 the people in your community. Um, yeah. Do you have any like anything you want to tell my chat or like anything you want to talk about in that sense? Obviously, I personally don't have any experience with that, but I would love to hear from you. Uh, sure. Um, I firstly want to say, you know, like. I think it's a disproportionate amount of people of color in AD mental health services. We see that obviously at RAD too, but um, a lot of people of color we've kind of found they do not want to, they think it's weakness basically to seek out help and to ask for help. And I had that a lot in my family because we kind of just grit and bear it. And a lot of people of color just kind of grit and bear it. Um, And that can be extremely, extremely negative, but we develop these coping mechanisms to withstand, you know, a lot of trauma that we have to go through every single day. So it just kind of feels like, well, I've been through so much, so why do I need to get help? Or why does this seem necessary? And like it 100% is, um, it's like, even if you look at the facts, it's like, um, most people of color, have the highest levels of stress they have the highest levels of depression and anxiety compared to their white counterparts but they are the smallest number to actually seek out mental health services Mm -hmm. and so I just think it's important for people to kind of put that aside and actually seek out help and it was also important for you know people to know that they are you know there's a small number of us, but there are, you know, black therapists and they are people of color therapists. And even when we get people of color who reach out to our services, they, when we ask them what kind of therapist they're looking for, they're like, well, I am an immigrant and I would love to talk to someone with that experience, but I just don't think it's out there. And I'm like, no, (laughs) it's out there, you know, you know, so it's, it's difficult because a lot of people don't want to reach out because they just think that I'm going to be talking to someone who just does not get me. But there's people out there 
that do get you and they're looking for people just like you to help them so um yeah i wrote my dissertation um in grad school on something called the strong black woman schema which is basically um a scheme which black black women especially kind of go by where it's called i have to be strong i have to be I have to weather it all because most black women are the caregivers of their families a lot of single households especially maybe about 50 percent of black households are led by single black women and so they feel like they can't reach out to mental health services or even think one second about themselves because they have so much going on and to focus on so much stress anxiety about kids raising a family um so they feel like they have to constantly put on just like a front or a facade Mm -hmm. of just being strong um it also kind of you know goes back to slavery because we had to put on a mask of course of strength to um actually get through that because you think about all the trauma that you know people of color suffer through every single day Mm -hmm. um it takes a lot of strength to be able to you know weather that and so that's where it kind of comes from and we learn these coping mechanisms and we actually pass them down to our kids you know we say like stop crying be strong which is what my mom used to always say to me um but it's also teaching kids that hey it's okay to cry and it's okay to show weakness and it's okay to be vulnerable but people of color we don't have that luxury all the time to be vulnerable and to be weak or show weakness because it's constantly kind of um an uphill battle pretty much every day but I'm hopefully you know um hoping that that will change and that we can you know be vulnerable be able to show emotions and not be considered you know crazy or overreacting or things like that and we're able to enter services and actually talk to people who look like us and who understand us and can really um help our community more so that's kind of like (laughs) what I'm passionate about really is just we're always looking for um ways and rad to just really increase our um reach in different communities of color Mm -hmm. wow I thank you so much I um yeah wow I, I I don't even have any words but I think that's I think that's great and amazing and I'm sure you know chat Thank if you. anyone out there you know here's this therapy is for everyone and also these jobs are for everyone like, i think a big mm-hmm. thing is also like when people think or say that there are no people of color or people from different you know ethnicities or backgrounds in these jobs um that there are no opportunities for it but there are and if you you know whatever job you want to do in your life you you can reach it and you can Definitely. Yeah, I mean, coming from a high school dropout who now has her master's, like you can definitely do it. Don't be afraid to apply for those positions, apply for those jobs. Don't be afraid to go back to school and um, don't think of these careers as like something that is incredibly out of reach because it's not and it's a need there. We need more people of color Mm -hmm. to be therapists or doctors or things like that. I mean, it's a crazy number of like, um, I guess with black women, we die during childbirth at an unprecedented rate um, other than any other race till this day. That's crazy. You know? Yeah, we are the most likely to die um, during childbirth. And something to do with not having, you know, black women doctors to look at or people of color doctors to even, you know, help us out. And again, with the strong woman schema is because we hold it in we don't necessarily tell the doctor like hey this hurts or that hurts because we don't want to seem like we can't handle it and a lot of times because historically we have have the um we are associated with strength um a lot of doctors just don't listen to us when we are in pain or things are like things are you know going wrong with us they're just like no i think she can handle it or i think she's fine so you know, it it definitely is needed to have people of color in those dif- like positions, especially in the medical field and in the mental health field. So if anyone else is out there and they think about it, please do the research and 
please join us. You can always, you know, um, ask me if you need some help or um, anything like that to get into the field. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't even know that. That is that is crazy. And obviously, that's my own ignorance. So thank you for for telling me that. I would love to hear and read more about like everything you just told me because that's such a like i didn't even think that was like a thing that could still happen so yeah wow yeah you think that like you know we've evolved so much in our technologies crazy to where um you know child dying in childbirth should be a rare occurrence yeah. but there's still instances where it is 100 percent um avoidable but also fatal <laughs> fat fatal mm-hmm. um there's a lot of different um GoFundMe's and um, even like public kind of outrage when it does happen but obviously you know like Black Lives Matter and things like that um, it gets a lot of traction at first and then it peters out because I think just as a society in general we have just like so much going on so we just lose interest so fast so even though this person died and they died in a way that was avoidable you know during childbirth you're just like, wow, that sucks. And you get really upset mm-hmm. and you go protest. And then like next week, something there's something else. else. Happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, I think okay. kind of tying, probably tying, maybe tying that in. Um, the next question I have is what are some of the challenges that you face during your job or you have faced during your job? Again, you can only share as much as you're comfortable with. Yeah. But Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess a lot of the challenges would just um be my own mental health, I guess. Um, listening to people's stories and, you know, constantly it, sometimes I'll have like five meetings in a row and people don't mean to trauma dump and one hundred percent like I give them the space to vent and mm-hmm. tell me like everything that's going on. But because I do also struggle with depression, anxiety and also suicide 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 ideation um not currently thankfully but because I do have experience with that it does kind of re-trigger me a little Mm -hmm. bit so I try um to take space and like we're all really good um at rad to say like hey I'm taking the rest of the day off I I can't right now I'm triggered and I need some time yeah and so they're all like everyone's amazing about that about taking mental health days about just looking after yourself um to prevent burnout and to prevent you know just being re-triggered and re-traumatized honestly so that's kind of like one of the biggest challenges um is just be and then obviously like sometimes you get those really really sad um stories where you just kind of have to have a cry after um but it honestly like kind of pushes me a bit more to wanting to find that person a therapist to wanting to help them even more so I'm just like I know what you've been through I've been through the same let's let's do it (laughs) Mm -hmm. are you currently in therapy yeah I am in therapy um I think it's really important for mental health practitioners or even anyone in the mental health field to also have a therapist too because we take so much on from our clients and there's cases that I will still, you know, haunt me at, in when I go to sleep at night. So it's really important for us to take care of our mental health so that we're able to take care of other people's mental health. Um, so yeah, I do have a therapist that I see um, weekly and she's awesome at helping me out and making sure that I can kind of make those boundaries within myself and my mental health and also my job. Mm-hmm. That's so nice. Um, I want to see if chat has any questions. So chat, do you guys have any questions that you want to? I think someone asked for your pronouns earlier. Uh, I didn't ask oh. them. So that's my bad. Yeah, it's, no, it's okay. It's uh, she, her. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, someone asked how you got through your social anxiety. Yeah, um, it's something I still struggle with. Um, even like right now, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, definitely with lots of therapy and honestly, just mantras 
um, breathing techniques, um, just kind of affirmations and saying to myself, like, you are worthy, you are worth it. Um, people, I guess my thing, my social anxiety is people judging me or thinking like, I'm always like, oh my God, they hate me <laughs> sort of a thing. So um, just saying like, you are worthy, you have amazing friends who love you you'll get through this, you know? So just kind of like breathing, meditating, and just kind of making those affirmations to yourself really helps. And it also um, just talking about it too. Um, Cause a lot of people with anxiety, they kind of just keep it to themselves. And I find like talking about my anxiety to like my friends and opening up cause they tell me about their anxieties and we just kind of have like a vent session and it makes me feel a lot better at the end of it too. Mm-hmm. I feel like especially when you feel like your friends hate you or are judging you, it's it's also really important yeah. to, you know, just talk about it. Because a lot of times it is just in your head. And if it's not, then you can talk it out and you can talk about it. And real yeah. true don't, friends are going to be there. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to communicate with your friends about any and everything because they love you. And if they're your real friends, they're going to be there for you. And if they aren't, then they weren't worth it. They weren't your friends to begin with, so. For sure, yeah. Yeah, did you, how how did it oh, feel to yeah. move to a different country? Like, what what kind of helped yeah. you through that? Did you have, obviously, did, did you move with your friend right away or did you have a year before and then move with your friend? How was that? So I, I moved with her, but mm-hmm. I didn't get to see her because we moved at different times over there. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get to see her until maybe a couple maybe a week or so into the process um I really found like my mom came um over with me to help me get moved in and everything like that so that was a huge help um because I was kind of going through the experience with her um I did a ton of research about it all too which was super helpful so I kind of had to plan everything out and make sure that I knew where things were um it was very scary it's terrified <laughs> you know <laughs> but um luckily like it would still be so terrified yeah yeah it's yeah. it's a lot it's a big move especially you know I never been out of the country before so everything was new um even like I would get on the bus and realize that I'm going in the wrong the opposite way because <laughs> of the street yeah difference. of course yeah oh my god I would it's so many times that I probably like was this close to being hit by a car <laughs> oh because I just I looked this way and I'm like okay I can walk but thinking that it's mm-hmm. it was insane um it's really hard uh I, luckily I had a friend there for that first year to kind of act as more of a buffer and she had been to uh, London before so she was showing me the ropes and showing me around so I'm so thankful that my mom came and then I had her um that second year by myself that was hard <laughs> Yeah. Luckily, I had made friends. I had made friends in my class, my cohort, so they were awesome. But homesickness um, definitely was real. I went home for like holidays and stuff, but that was the furthest I've ever been from home, and it definitely like it got to me a little bit. Um, but I'm just really thankful that I had that experience, and I 100% will be going back. To it. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah. I- yeah, I can imagine how scared it was, like scary it was though. But um, yeah. and then I had um, I was there when COVID hit. So oh, really? really? <laughs> yeah, I was finishing up my program. We were writing our dissertations. We were finishing up our internships, and then I was actually interning at a mental health hospital, which was down the street from like the actual NHS, like kind of hospital, and I was terrified. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, does someone have COVID on the ward? Um, they handled COVID super, super well. Um, they closed everything down right away. Um, but it was just really difficult to find like toilet paper or flour or any basic ingredients. So I had to get on the bus and like find food and places to go. So it was really tough. Um, all of my flights that I had booked to go to come back home were just kept getting canceled. So I was pretty scared <laughs> for a while, but um, everything ended up working out, luckily. I'm so glad. Yeah, I remember when I was, because um, I, I, I'd already lived in a different country when COVID hit, I thought I would never see my family again. I didn't know, you know, 
you would not know yeah. what, what would happen in the future so and being because mm-hmm. i was luckily just on the neighboring country but being on a completely different continent that was like, yeah so scary yeah i like i was doing fine up until um my flights kept getting canceled mm-hmm. And then I was telling my mom, I was like, okay, so this one got canceled again. And then she started freaking out, of course. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, there's a chance that I may be stuck here for a while. And then obviously I was living in like a a student block of flats. So I was like, I don't know how long I can stay here because they, you know, they have to come in. I have like a agreement to stay there for, you know, as many months, but I had no idea what else was going on. So I really thought, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get home, but hopefully it works out. So that was definitely a moment where I was like freaking out. I can imagine. Oh my God. Yeah, that that, that puts puts it even more into perspective when you told me that it was during COVID. That's crazy. Wow. Um, Let's see if if anyone else. Chat again. uh, we We also have a few people joining us from the Goose House. Thank you so much. For joining the stream hello hello would you like to introduce yourself again do it quick for the people who just joined yeah hi everyone um my name is courtney i am um a social worker i work at rise above disorder which is a nonprofit charity that helps people find therapists and also helps people be able to pay for therapy for therapy um i'm from los angeles and yeah we've just been chatting about mental health and um social work <laughs> mm-hmm. and if you guys have any questions then you're you're welcome to ask them <laughs> um, let's see let's see if everyone if anyone has a few questions i think we were actually um like talking about covid we were talking yesterday with jenny about like the like lingering trauma we all kind of experience from um yeah. from covid and I always I like to bring it up because I feel like it is such an important thing that a lot of us either are not aware of or aren't talking about or you know working through but we all have yeah. like shared trauma from this this was yeah. an awful situation 100 percent, yeah and I think it's so funny too because all, like during that time when um, people were like lockdown got lifted and people were starting to come out more and more there were so many people that reached out to us that were just affected by COVID and just Mm -hmm. mentally just could not cope with it all. A lot of people were like, um, they had been inside. Yeah. They've been overwhelmed. Like they had been inside for so long. They were having even like, they'd never had social anxiety before, but because they were basically on lockdown, now they have the social anxiety and like a little bit of agoraphobia, agoraphobia, just coming outside and like being back into the new world. That was just so hard. A lot of people ended up losing a lot of their jobs. And so that threw them into, you know, a depression. So it was just, we got hit from every single angle from people that were just struggling um, mm-hmm. with COVID and post COVID. Yeah, I can imagine. Even though we're- still in COVID but you know yeah yeah of course but you know we're kind of expected to go back to normal at this point Mm -hmm. which I always find so crazy how we could just live through three years of our lives being taken away from us to we have to continue as if nothing ever happened yeah you have to like 100% bounce back and they're like okay (laughs) yeah come back into the office everything's fine and it's just like no, I am extremely traumatized and I don't feel comfortable even sitting next to a person. So it's just, they kind of just um, took our mental health, I guess, for granted there mm-hmm. um, and thinking that we could just, <laughs> just like completely bounce back, like nothing yeah. happened. Which I find really interesting as well, because I feel like everyone went through it. So, you know, how could you go through this yourself and then expect other people to not feel like this as well exactly yeah 100 percent. and not to be like political but definitely like capitalism Mm -hmm. is all about like go 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 you have to make money you have to do this and they rely heavily on the workforce Mm -hmm. so even if we all have that kind of fatigue from going through a global pandemic 
there's still, you know, 100% a need for us to get back to work to make money so that things run, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really frustrating because it just shows the lack of empathy um, for that people have for their workers. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. I'm I, when I get quiet, it's because I read chat. By the way, just just so you, okay. you know, I'm still here. I'm just I'm just reading. <laughs> um. Oh, do you? What is your opinion on? Because we we also talked about this yesterday, and I I. Uh, I personally, I went through DBT twice, so I learned mindfulness um, a lot. What is your opinion on that, um, especially tying it in with social anxiety and, you know, going outside, <laughs> feeling yeah. the way you feel? <laughs> yeah, mindfulness is super important. I am a little ADHD, so I have to really force myself to, like, get into that place. But once I'm there, it's just so... I guess just so helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, so just kind of like taking a minute for yourself. I think of it as self care, honestly. Um, so just take a second and like check in with yourself is super helpful because then you can kind of understand what you're feeling. Um, a lot of work that I've been doing in therapy is kind of like, I guess following my trains of thought where it's like, okay, you think this. Why do you think that? Mm -hmm. Let's get like try to trace it back to the root of that negative thought. And I think mindfulness definitely can help with that because you can kind of notice what thoughts are coming up and how they're connected and trace it back to the root to where you can say like, okay, the root is I don't feel confident in myself. Why don't I feel confident in myself? Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of look at the life experiences that you've had to push you to make you feel that way. So it's just kind of tracing it back is what I've been using mindfulness for um, and what's been helping with my social anxiety, especially. Mm -hmm. I have another question because you mentioned ADHD yeah. and I have a lot of friends who have ADHD. Uh, oh my God, sorry. My cat just did something with my camera. <laughs> I'm still here. It's okay. um, yeah, I have, a, um, so I have a lot of friends who have, men have ADHD um, and especially for girls, I feel like it can be really hard to either be diagnosed and also be yeah. recognized um how do you 100%. feel that yeah um, did you have any actually, experience with that or yeah well um actually specific uh actually like to talk about statistics um women and girls are less likely to be diagnosed with adhd mm -hmm. um because it's seen because adhd their symptoms as well kind of overlap with a lot of other mental health disorders um and personality disorders and things like that so um it is definitely less um diagnosed in women and I think a lot of time uh I always say like misogyny comes into it as well where um we're just taking we're taken less seriously than um our male counterpoints counterparts as well um we have a lot of people and a lot of women um, come to us with ADHD concerns who feel like they've been misdiagnosed um, with other things and kind of have to like actually fight for that and so a lot of times we're looking for um, psychiatrists that you know can actually diagnose them properly um, so we do see that a ton mm -hmm. yeah that's what I what I figured because I've heard it over yeah. and over again all the time um and I remember when I got my diagnosis, I don't have ADHD, but I do have a personality disorder. Um, I was sure I had it, but then the more I talked to my friends, I'm like, what if it is ADHD? Because there's so much overlapping, especially with yeah. women, I feel like, with you know how the symptoms are in women, um, mm -hmm. that it can be such a like tricky topic. Um, so I'm yeah. glad to hear it as well from you, because I, I figured no, it was a thing, so. and I hear it all the time. Definitely a thing. Um, and I want to tell, I want to tell people too, as well as like you in the chat mm -hmm. to feel free to challenge like the doctors, mm -hmm. um, and your psychiatrist, you know, if you don't accept that diagnosis, make them kind of spell it out for you. You don't have to say like, okay. And then just like <laughs> walk away. <laughs> it's okay to ask questions and say like, okay, well, in my research, I found that this was something that I might've had. Can you explain to me why I have this instead of this 
or just anything like that don't be like obviously don't like uh fight (laughs) you know but it's okay to ask questions and really kind of like assert yourself because this is the time for you and if you're going to be labeled something for the rest of your life um that's super important to go ahead and make sure you know every single thing that went into judging that criteria of your characteristics and like your symptoms Mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to ask questions kind of question it you know make sure you do your own research and really kind of make sure you're leaving there with like a complete sense of like okay this is how it is i have (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah very true it's the same with um you know getting the right therapist you want to have someone yeah. who understands you and who, you know, who you understand as well. <laughs> yeah, I always tell my clients, I'm like, listen, you're going to be telling the, this person your deepest, darkest secrets, right? You want to make sure that the connection is there, that the vibe is right. So I always say, like, if you do not like the therapist I match you with, you can just say, Courtney, you suck at your job. Find me someone else. <laughs> And I swear, I don't take it personally. I'm like, I'm on it, you know, <laughs> because at the match, like the, the fitness of it has to be right. You know, you can even decide like three months down the line that actually I despise this person mm-hmm. and that's OK. But don't force yourself to stick with something that's obviously not working. Yeah, for sure. Did you ever have that experience where you, you know, found someone and it didn't work out (laughs) yeah I feel like I feel like therapists are trained to understand that though if you tell your therapist like yeah this doesn't work out you know it's fine but it's fine yeah it feels like it feels like you're breaking up with someone right when you're just like (laughs) I'm gonna be seeing other people (laughs) (laughs) I don't think this is gonna work it's not it's not you it's me (laughs) it's not you it's me but actually (laughs) but actually it's you yeah Um, Yeah, so things didn't work out with my first therapist, and I felt awful because at first it was everything was going great. We got into maybe about three months in, and she was like, "Yeah, I think you're doing pretty well. Um, I think we should take a break from therapy now because you're, you know, doing great." Meanwhile, I was doing awful. Mm -hmm. I had, I still had my depression. I didn't have help with anything, and honestly, the relatability wasn't there. She was an older woman. Um, so when I would talk about like dating and like dating apps and Bumble and things like that, she would judge me super harshly and be like, well, that's dangerous. Why are you meeting oh up with God. a person over the internet? And I don't think you should do that. You should just go meet people the old fashioned way. And I'm like, there is no old fashioned way. <laughs> what? what do you mean old fashioned way? <laughs> yeah. So it's just kind of, I just felt kind of judged in that. And also, um, some of the things she said, I just was like, I think I need a younger person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like a bad thing. It's just knowing yourself and what you need. And it's okay to kind of walk away if you feel like it's not working. Um, and yeah, I did feel bad 100% because she did help me through a lot. Mm-hmm. But at the same time for my journey, I needed some more help that she couldn't provide for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's totally fair as well. Like if you... You know, yeah, can help you with one thing and then can't help you with the other. I definitely also have that ex- like a similar like similar experiences with therapists before. Maybe not dating apps, but being in this industry, you know. Oh, for you sure. know, yeah. explaining to my therapist what I do for a living. Oh, I had a therapist so think I do sex work before, <laughs> which is totally fine, but I don't do it. Yeah, you're just like let's not get budgy here, yeah. but I do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, it's so crazy. I have a lot of people, a lot of clients who with uh, when I want like we kind of make a wish list at the end of the call where it's like, tell me everything that you're needing in a therapist. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, it'll be someone they'll ask for someone who understands the Internet, understands Twitch and can understand like gaming culture and things like that, because um they've had experiences in the past where they're like, okay, what are you talking about? So they want someone that they don't have to explain everything to. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's totally normal. And there's therapists out there that are gamers too. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. I feel like that can be really difficult, especially with older therapists who, when I, when I tell them I've been, I played 
video games for like three, four hours. So yesterday, they're like, wait, you did what? For how long? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Is this an addiction? Yeah, or? exactly, exactly. They tried to try to write it down. Uh -huh. Interesting. How long do you play in a week? I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's them literally testing to see if you have a, a <laughs> yeah. video game addiction. And it's like, no, it's just my job and it's fun. Because like, I think video games is like a source of coping for a lot of people. And most people that reach out to me, I guess like 99% would say playing video games is a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, obviously, like there is such a such thing as video game addiction. Yeah. But when you're using it for coping, I think it's completely different. And it's like definitely okay. Like I will sit down if I'm having a really bad day, sit down with like Animal Crossing and it just like. Like just wind down. yeah <laughs> just like completely wind down and so I don't think that's like an issue but obviously with sometimes with older therapists they look for those types of trends and they're mm -hmm. like is this a problem <laughs> yeah and like with everything it's like everything's good in moderation and yeah for yeah. sure especially now after COVID we are so used to being on our computer um, mm -hmm. so yeah I feel like and a lot has changed <laughs> it's harder out there to kind of like get out and you know do things especially if you are like me where like most of my friends are in different states and so I'm like I'd be going to the movies like by myself and like I've gotten okay with that mm -hmm. but it took a long time for mm -hmm. me to like be out of the house and doing things on my own yeah for sure um, someone asked a really good question. Um, they asked, how do you learn to trust your therapist? Or, like, do you have any tips to maybe like for someone who just started therapy or is about yeah. to start therapy? I'd say before kind of like opening up more, because obviously you have to have that trust to open up more. I would just more or less think of it as you're having conversations. You know, you're getting to know each other. And so don't put too much pressure on it where it's like, okay, this person is going to be the one to tell me what to do. <laughs> it's just more or less like, do I even like you? <laughs> yeah. Sort of a thing. So just make sure you kind of like start off slow and kind of ease into it. And once you do feel that connection, that's great. If you feel like it's just like, oh, we're two different people and it's just not going to work, then trust yourself in that. Um, but yeah, just treat it kind of like a conversation. Um, a lot of times they'll have like the first like session be a meet and greet sort of a thing. Um, if you feel like their personality is just kind of not lining up with yours, then like I like to joke a lot um, about mental health and like in, with my sessions. And so I really want a therapist that is also kind of like they can take the joke and not just say like, oh, you have serious mental illness. Yeah, they're like, oh, actually, this is worrying. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. <laughs> You're writing it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I, you know, so I look for that in the therapist so that I can be able to joke with them and laugh and honestly connect as just like two humans instead of connecting as like you're you're up here and then I have to be down here, you know, just like mm -hmm. find that middle ground because obviously they're going to be helping you out, but they're there for you. So if you're also kind of like, mm, I like this method more than that method, just tell them because they're willing. A lot of therapists are willing to switch up their styles um, to make it work mm -hmm. but um yeah just kind of treat it like a conversation in the beginning before you start opening up and then just kind of say little things about your day and then just kind of get their feedback um and just kind of I guess test the waters in the beginning but don't be afraid to have that kind of like trial period give yourself you know some time to really like see if you even like this person mm -hmm. yeah I agree I'm I am so bad by the way with therapy I always yeah. I go in and the therapist is like tell me about yourself and I'm like okay so it all started when I was born and then I just tell the entire story <laughs> I don't this even is care my life story. this is my life actually I wrote it all down <laughs> you, you have a yeah <laughs> no I am like that too because I'm just like I ha I have a tendency to overshare mm -hmm. just to anyone in me general <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm just like, what do you want to know? Because I will go right back to the beginning. Yeah, an open book. So, <laughs> I'm an open book. Yeah, so if you definitely have those kind of like trust issues, just take it slow. Like nothing's going to happen overnight. It could like take a while for you to even like kind of talk about traumas and things like that. You don't have to be like us mm -hmm, <laughs> exactly, immediately. Like, sure. Chill. <laughs> and they'll be understanding, you know, they do this as a as a work as their work as a living yeah you know they talk yeah to and people. you can 
Yeah. And you can just kind of tell them like, hey, you know, I have a hard time opening up. I really would like to get to know you first before we kind of go into the deeper um, issues that I'm struggling with. And they'll be like, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be an issue at all. Um, okay, I would say maybe chat if you have like one more question and then also Courtney if you have one like another thing you want to share with with chat. Um, yeah, because <laughs> we're reaching the one hour, so. Okay. Um, yeah, I would just say, honestly, um, if you're going through struggles and stuff, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, always check in with yourself. Um about how you're feeling and therapy is not a weakness feeling sad depressed anxious those are things that are basic human emotions mm -hmm. you know don't be afraid to say like yep today I felt depressed or I have depression it's nothing to be ashamed of it's nothing to there's nothing wrong with you um and if you need to reach out to a therapist that's not weakness at all that is strength that you're showing that you're willing to help yourself and better yourself so um yeah always reach out and put yourself first <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i agree <laughs> um <clears throat> let's see if if there are any questions a lot of them we have already answered um but i just wanted to tell you that i'm so inspired by everything you told me today and oh i am I, i'm definitely going to like read up on you know especially black women and the black community because i know i know that there are so many struggles um but i'm not directly you know not, uh, what is it called? yeah like, in I, the I, community. yeah like i'm not directly in it so i don't see it all the time but hearing mm -hmm. about it always makes me like wanting to hear and read more about it so especially if you have anything that i can read up on that would be great if you can give me any um any more or more things on that but yeah i'm so inspired yeah. by everything you you told me today and i'm so grateful for your time and for being here thank you so 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 thank much you. Um, thank you so much yeah. for having me i really appreciate it yeah thank you um, first stream <laughs> yeah. how, do, how do you feel first how did you stream. find it <laughs> So fun, yeah, it's really great. I definitely was super nervous, mm -hmm. but now I'm like, okay, I can, I can be on stream. <laughs> yeah, you were great. I mean, chat loves you. Thank you. I don't know if you can Aww. see the chat, but they're all spamming hearts. They love you. Oh my gosh, I, <laughs> yeah. I can't see the chat, but like, heart yeah. back, guys. Thank you. Yeah. No, you, you were amazing, and you know, you yeah. were great at talking as well. Like, I feel like. If I had to go on a stream and I didn't know what it was and how it felt, I would choke on my words so much. I still choke on my words. Thanks. I've been doing it for yeah. so long. So yeah, no, you were great. You were amazing. And I'm so, so, thank so, so thankful. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Um, okay, I think I'm going to let you go then and enjoy right. the rest of your day. Um, okay, yeah. you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Oh, all right. Oh, she was so sweet. Oh my god. That was that was amazing. Thank you so much, Courtney. And Rod again. Thank you so much. Wow. I yeah, I I always love hearing I Oh, oh I'm muted. Uh, I need to mute myself. I always love hearing about like other people's stories and other communities. Like that is so great. And I'm so happy that, like, I'm so glad that Rad gave me so many different people from so many different backgrounds to talk to. Thank you so much, Rad. Um, I'm going to read out all the um, donations as well. How did you find that chat? What did you think? How did you find it? You missed this one because you studied? Don't worry, it's going to be saved. It's going to be uh, saved on the VOD. She was so cute. I know, wasn't she? Why can I not? I can't log in. Give me one second. I need to log in. Why can I not log in? Sign in with Twitch. Yes. Yes. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> really interesting, and informative. Hell yeah! I'm glad. That's what. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to do. 
Mm. Very eye opening. I agree. Let's put on some music. And I'm going to read all the donations from today, uh, which is Brower, thank you for the $5. Katya, thank you for the $1. I know it's not much, but right now I can't give more. That's okay. Oh my god. I still want to support, support my, show my support and I will be able to give more. Don't worry, Katya. Every dollar, every, every dollar is appreciated. And even if you can't give any money, even watching these streams is support enough chat always i really appreciate it um thank you ghost for the five dollars this has helped me a lot i'm so glad and thank you ella for the ten dollars and thank you uh espir sp rabbit for the five dollars i appreciate it thank you helpful to see your pov as a platform and yes i'm so, i'm so glad yeah. I'm so, oh my god i need to keep muting myself sorry i wasn't be able to hear able to be here at the start um but what i did get to see was thought provoking interesting encouraging i'm glad yes um again the vod is going to be up so if you want to re-watch this or watch certain parts or anything you're very welcome to um 15 year old wants to be a therapist in a few years thank you for making these streams oh i'm so glad hell yeah that's what i'm doing it for because i i feel like when i was younger i never had any resources like this you know and i feel like there are still there still aren't that many resources like this where you can just hear insights from mental health like workers from people who do this every day as a living um so i find it so like fun to hear from these people because i want to work in this i want to hear about this and know about this so yeah oh my god sorry may is distracting me every time like the last like half an hour of a stream may just keeps distracting me she's trying to climb up my leg little girly little girly you're distracting i cannot read chat if you're distracting me um do you have any personal advice on how to talk to your parents about your mental health? So I, I personally, um, never had to have, luckily never had to have, have the conversation with my mom of like, Hey, I need help. Cause my mom was the one who thought I needed help. Um, but it took a long time. It took a long time and it took me like being the rebellious teenager that I was and like being awful. Honestly, I was, I was not. I, I didn't have a good time at that time um but I can kind of tell you what I so okay I'm trying to I'm trying to see how what I would do in this situation because I've not been in this situation luckily um but I know it can be really difficult I think one thing is being persistent like you know parents can be really ignorant especially like with the whole mentality of there's nothing wrong with my child and i think being persistent and like maybe even just slowly introducing your parents to like mental health or telling them there's something wrong or maybe also just sitting them down and telling them hey this is how i've been feeling this is what would help me and i would need your support for this like being open and honest and true about them and just sitting them down and letting them know and then if they don't accept it being persistent and telling them no this is actually how i feel and this is how i what i go through every single day of my life and i would like Less to talk to someone about it and i love you you're my parents but i cannot talk to you about it like you know something like that thank you so much Ero Ren, for the three months um but yeah i I know it can be really hard because no parent wants to have something wrong with their child you know every parent every parent's child is perfect but sadly that's not the truth and you know we need to be more honest about it and more open about it and if you think there's something wrong or if you if you don't even think there's something wrong if you would just like to talk to someone sit your parents down 
<clears throat> I hope that helped a little. Again, I, I sadly don't have any, well, luckily don't have any personal experience with that, but I wish I could share that with you and I wish I could let you know about that. Mm. yeah but yeah i think that was i think that was it for today um i have to finish packing because i have to leave really early tomorrow to go to again la um i'm gonna go and see who i can raid oh <gasps> chat chat sneak is playing the last of us another great mental oh, health stream. anyway just thought i'd say that i hope you oh, take it girl. easy being busy with all the content in america thank you take thank care you, and have you. safe travels and don't worry we will hold down the fort while you're away yes chat hold have down the fort time, keep the keep the chat warm and active while i am gone i will be i will be back very Wishing soon you safe travels this week hope thank you have you. fun in la I will I will be I will be enjoying it and I will tell you all about my travels and once I'm back I will tell you but well, well, not once I'm back once I'm allowed to talk about it and share with you what I've been doing in LA I'm gonna be so excited and tell you all of it and react to it with you and everything um, and I have I actually have so many things I want to talk to you guys about so I think either I'm gonna do like a just chatting stream where I just catch up with you guys or I'm gonna do a YouTube video where I just tell you everything very soon it's going to happen because <laughs> I have so many things and so many updates that I actually want to share with you because I don't know if you guys have realized but I've been really busy I've been very busy and just not very active on stream and just on the internet recently and I think time that i share with you how i what i've been doing what i've been up to why i've been so busy why have i been so busy anyways go give sneak some love i hope you guys enjoyed the stream thank you so much for watching again i could not do these without you guys um thank you for being here i hope you all have a wonderful morning evening or day wherever you are and i will see you in the next one bye the next one is in a week one week tuesday the 14th oh my god valentine's day yeah that's when i come back so we'll have a valentine's day stream chat